too often I find myself sitting in a room or on the phone with a UX graduate talking about how things haven't panned out quite yet. It's in these scenarios that the alarms start to go off in my head and I end up giving the exact same feedback. Today, I'm recording it, so listen up. I love sitting down and hearing from students who are in school or who are recent graduates from their UX program. The truth is, I just love this phase of life myself. Uh, it was one of the toughest and most stressful times of my life up to that point. I graduated from my four-year degree, I was married, I had a one-year-old, and then it was like, now what? For that reason and so many more, I try and sit down with people in this scenario at least once a week, if not more. Many of you listening might have even been on the other side of the table in one of those experiences. We talk about how great your UX program was for you and how much you learned. Uh, we review a project of yours. We ooh, we ah at some of the good work. We critique some of the other parts for improvement. And then after the smiles, I ask, now what? It's at this point in time that I hear things like, well, things haven't panned out how I would have liked, or I'm still searching for a place to apply these skills. If you're in that scenario, listen closely. You're not alone. While you may have a graduate friend who landed a gig super quickly, those success stories of landing a job in just a couple weeks out of graduation don't represent the majority. Uh, we hear about them and we talk about them because that's what we're all aiming for. But more often than not, we start to face the brutal truths of reality. Things like rent, insurance, phone bills, electrical bills, internet bills, car payments, and the list goes on. You can't afford to sit and to wait a year before something happens. I know, I get it. My first bit of advice is always this, be patient and trust the process. But I think that's part of my mistake. This really needs to be advice number two. I'm afraid people take that advice and just keep aimlessly applying for jobs all with no success. They sit back and they think, well, I'll be patient and trust the process. No. We all know the most overused cliche in the world is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting different results. It's a terrible quote, but it gets the point across. Do something else. Or rephrased for self-reflection, what else are you doing? Do another project. As a hiring manager, I want to hire candidates who've proven in actions and not in words that they've stayed hungry after graduation and are continuing to learn on their own with their own projects. Here's where I start to lose people. They say, but what projects? They literally don't know where to look for their next project. So documented on today's rant is just a few ideas of what else you could be doing. Number one, ask a friend, a family member, a neighbor, ask on Facebook or social media if their business needs a new website. Every business needs a website, if not at the very least for a search and result or a listing. Take on a project, practice your UX skills and improve their business online. My bread and butter for the last nine years has been freelancing websites. Yes, apps are a lot of fun, but more often than not, I can sell three or four websites before I can sell an app design project. The internet is just loaded and littered with websites. Yes, I know, but still, when a new startup or business is ready to get off the ground, for whatever reason, they start with a logo first and a website second. It's an easy pitch. Maybe you can sell this, but maybe you end up doing it for free. In the end, you get more experience, and if you can clearly document that you've learned something or that you've got something else to put into your portfolio, it's a win. Number two, close to number one, but aimed more for the person who says, I can't afford to do free work, then take a look around and examine your expenses and find a way to barter trade. When Jane and I were newlyweds, I took this approach at the apartment complex we lived at. They were literally the only complex in town without a website. There was no way to get any information about their complex without walking into the office. I approached one of the owners uh, and managers and said, I wanted to build the complex a website. And I detailed the value it was going to bring the complex. They went along with it and in a few quick weeks, I had a site up and running and I was driving new traffic to their complex. They sat at max capacity 
every single month since. We lived at this complex for about two years. And for those two years, they subsidized our rent for that work. It was a huge saver on my monthly bills. And ever since moving out six years ago, I've been getting a monthly retainer. Did you hear that? They still send me a check every single month for the work I did over six years ago. What opportunities do you have around you that you're missing? I think this way every time my wife and I go out. Maybe you're on a date night to a local cheap seat movie theater. I bet somewhere in their marketing, advertising, or whatever, there's some UX that could be applied to make it better. Approach the managers, ask to help them out. Maybe in this case, uh, in return, you're asking for free concessions for a year. I don't know, it doesn't matter. In the end, you've got something that you can document that you've clearly applied the UX skills and made something better. My apartment complex wasn't a fluke. I did the exact same thing just last year when I found a top-notch motorcycle mechanic who was underrepresented online. After building him a website and getting it highly converting online, he's become consistently profitable every month for the first time ever. It was a fun project and all, but better is now he works on all of my toys for free. Look at the things around you, look at the things you spend money on, and look for ways to mitigate that by putting your newfound UX skills to the test. Again, great documentation of your process and results will really make you pop out from the rest of the candidates applying for jobs. If you've come up with excuses on why you can't do number one or number two, there are literally no excuses why you can't do this. Number three, at the bare minimum, open a web browser and start Googling for UX design challenges. The point again is to keep practicing. Get more than your couple of school projects in your portfolio and continue to document what you're learning. This hunger to improve demonstrated in your actions really sets people apart. Now you might say, well, how many pieces do I need in my portfolio? And I don't really have a magic number, but if your portfolio is three pieces and they're all things you did in school and you haven't added anything since, stop complaining about not landing the job yet. The reason is right in front of you and the solution is more practice and more documentation. I've heard people ask, would I rather see quality over quantity? And the answer for me and others who hold a similar position is a resounding quality. But don't be naive enough to think that your best projects are all behind you. Continue to do more work and replace some of your pro portfolio projects of lesser quality. Uh, and just keep improving, keep improving your portfolio. Once you get into this habit, and you're learning and engaging in higher quality projects with higher quality results, then I give you one other piece of advice. Be patient and trust the process. You can become a better designer without holding down a full-time position. The key will be to find things to work on and surround yourself with good people who help you on that journey. I'm not spewing BS. I've yet to come across anyone who's applied these principles and not found themselves in a better position. That better position could come in many forms. Hopefully it's full-time work if that's what you desire, but sometimes it's just a budding freelance career in UX. And yes, people, people desperately want UX contractors. Sometimes it's simply uh, just meeting new people along the way who are gonna be willing to help you out in the future. I've said it in other episodes, but I'll say it again, get after it. Show them in your next interview that you haven't sat on your thumbs since graduation. That's a wrap on this episode of Design Today. If this was in any way inspiring to you, please consider subscribing. If you're listening to this on YouTube, don't forget that there's a podcast version available for when you're on the go. And if you're sitting on the pot, don't forget I've got a YouTube version of it as well.